Welcome to Maitland Presbyterian Church. It's 2021. Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> so we're so happy to be here with you uh, in this worship service today. Uh, worship services will continue on the lawn with services at 8.30 and 10 o'clock and right here online at 10 a.m. every Sunday. Uh, today we are starting a new sermon series on perseverance. So we're excited to, to get into it. So let's start our worship series, a service. We've got uh, music and, and Jonathan Vanessa. So let's get going. Happy New Year, everybody. It's January and we've got a whole new month of exciting stuff to learn about in Sunday school this month. So, Ms. Vanessa, what, what is all this stuff? What do we got here? Well, all month long in January, we're going to be talking about how we have to keep going and push forward through tough things. So, I brought in some of my bibs and medals from some of the races I've done in the past. I've done, uh, so far I've done one ultra marathon, four full marathons, and a whole slew of half marathons and 5Ks. <laughs> Well, that sounds difficult. I'm, I'm not sure I'd want to be doing any of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, most people aren't really excited to do hard things. And if doing hard things isn't your thing, well, after this month, <laughs> that's going to change because we're talking all month long about perseverance. And perseverance is refusing to give up when life gets hard. Nobody who's super successful at anything in life got there without a little bit of perseverance. Mm -hmm. But trust me when I say this is something that we're all going to be glad we worked on. That's right. The best way to do hard things is to take it a step at a time. So for example, all those full marathons that I ran, um, it took a lot of training and each week I added miles to my runs until I got up to 26 miles. And we've got our own training to do this month. Wait, we're not, you didn't, we're not, I'm not saying I'm running a marathon, am I? <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course not. But we are going to do our own like little obstacle course challenge at the end of the month. Well, that sounds a little bit more fun. <laughs> well, today we are going to be taking a look at a story from the Bible that will help us see that we can keep going because God is with us. Yes, we will. So tune in right after the message.
We are reading a story from an athlete recently, and they wrote, it is a bizarre, painful, and scary experience. Your brain shifts to prioritize self-preservation and sends loud signals that you can't keep going anymore. Everything hurts. You lose sense of time. You even become emotional. Without this context, this could feel like any one of us as we keep moving through this crazy time in human history. But what it actually comes from is a marathon runner describing what it feels like to hit the wall. Hitting the wall happens, apparently, to <laughs> marathon runners, not us, somewhere in the last part of the race. You have come so far. You've pushed your body to run miles and miles of a race. Perhaps even harder, you've pushed through those mental, mental obstacles to be able to keep going. When it started, it didn't seem so bad, but now you're not sure that you can take another step and you hit the wall. So hitting the wall sounds about right for us right now. We are nine months into this craziness. We can almost see the finish line now if we squint into the distance, but the hardest few miles are still ahead of us. Now, more than ever, what you need, what we all need, is perseverance. So we are going to spend the whole month of January looking at perseverance in the letters of the New Testament together. People in the early church had their own share of difficulties and challenges. They were facing dark times and uncertainty, but over and over again, they're told to keep going, to not give up, to keep running toward the finish line like athletes in the final stretch of a long race. So today we're gonna to read from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. So let's look at Philippians chapter three, verses one through 14. Uh, this passage will lay the entire foundation for our study on perseverance. If you have a Bible at home, go ahead and get it out so you can read along with us. It starts like this. To write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. So the first thing Paul does is outline all the ways he is great. In fact, he's so bold to say, in essence, if you think you have something to brag about, I can top it. So his accomplishments include things like circumcision, uh, family lineage, religious leadership, a perfect follower of the law. So when we think about perseverance, we start with thinking about all the things that you might bring to the table. Your list will look different than Paul's on what you think constitutes bragging rights. So for you, maybe it's that you're smart or rich or strong or well-educated or healthy. So take a minute right now and think about all the things you might bring to the table that would make you especially prepared for the last few miles of a race. Are you thinking about them? All right, let's see what Paul says next. He says in verse seven, yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. All those things I bragged about, Paul writes, I have realized they don't matter. All those things you bring to the table, set them aside. Not because they aren't good, not because they don't make your life better in some ways, not because they aren't things that you can use to serve God and your neighbor, but because they aren't the things that will give you the power, the perseverance that you need. Why? Because these things convince you that you can do this on your own, that you're a team of one, that you don't need anyone else's help. But at some point, all those things that convince you to do life on your own will fail like a muscle that gives out before you cross the finish line. To have the kind of perseverance that will make it possible for you to finish strong over these next few months, you'll need more than what you can do alone. So take all these things that buffer up your pride, Lone Ranger, and set them aside. Because as is always the truth, God has something more for us. 
All right, let's keep reading. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in death, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. So if you set aside what you can do, you make room for what God can do. If you set aside what you can do, you make room for what God can do. And this is what it means to regard everything as lost for the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ. Now, maybe you're thinking, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> and maybe you are. Maybe your own strength has gotten you this far in life. Maybe you have been able to rely on your intelligence or your money or dumb luck <laughs> to get this far. But if you haven't already, at some point, you too will hit the wall. It might not happen all at once, but one day you'll wake up and think, I don't know that I can do this anymore. You'll feel your body or your mind start to stumble. You'll wonder how you can really keep going through another minute or maybe even another day. And when that time comes, you'll start to set aside all those things that told you that you could go it alone. Because the good news is, you don't have to. Jesus wants to give you his righteousness. Jesus wants to give you his power. Jesus wants to give you his strength. And when he does, you can persevere to the goal. Let's look at the last part of our passage from Philippians. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have already made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the price, prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting what lies behind. You know, your, your stuff that got you this far, and straining forward toward what lies ahead, the future God has prepared. We press on toward Jesus. This is what perseverance looks like. You can persevere, not because of who you are, but because of who God is. So over the next few weeks, we will look specifically at what this means when we face difficult times in a pep talk that we'll read from 2 Timothy. We'll talk about how we do this with one another in the cloud of witnesses from Hebrews. We'll talk about what is that end goal that keeps us going. And then in our last week, we'll look at how we find maturity in doing all of this work together. But your homework this week is simple. Invite Jesus in. Maybe you can keep going on your own, but you don't have to. Amen. Amen. Well, our church is keeping going, right? <laughs> We've been going through this for, for, for nine months. We're going to keep on going for forever. And a big way we do that is, is through your support. Uh, so now let's worship God through uh, the giving of our tithes and offerings. You can give online. You can do the text to give number. You can write a check and put it in the mail. But the important thing is that we're supporting the work of this church, the work of all of us, through these gifts. So let's worship God together.
Thank you for uh, supporting the work of this church uh, with your gifts. Uh, now let's, uh, let's pray together. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks this day that we are able to gather and worship together as your people. That even when we aren't together in body, we are united in spirit as the body of Christ, your church. We give you thanks too for a new year, that as we turn a page and a calendar, our hope is rekindled for the future that you have already prepared for us. Help us to be patient as we've still faced difficult times. Give us your perseverance that we would get through the coming days, not on our power, but only on yours. Unite us together as your church with the power of your spirit, that we would be sent out to partner with you in the work that remains to be done, that we would unite with you to heal the sick and the broken, to lift up the poor and the oppressed, to comfort the grieving and the lonely, and to be willing to respond with courage and boldness when you send us out to love others the way that you have loved us. We come to this day knowing too that we carry prayers on our hearts. Hear the prayers for the people that we lift before you this day as your people, the church. We pray that you would be with and surround each of them and that you would show us how to love them well. Bless us, O oh God, in this new year. Help us to move forward with hope and perseverance. Help us to trust in you and help us to renew our faith in obedience to do the work of discipleship this day. We have been united in spirit and worship, and now we unite our voices in prayer as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, go from this time and place and, and persevere. Go and, and rely on Christ's power within you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, be with those you love, and be with those who no one loves. Amen. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Hey everyone, welcome to Sunday School. Thanks for joining us. Do you guys know what this is called? It's a flannel graph. And Jonathan and I grew up hearing our Bible stories told with a flannel graph. It's a board sure. with some felt on it. When you put the characters on it and they'll stick. And that's how we're going to tell today's story. Um, we're going to use some emojis to tell our Bible story today. Um, to give you a little background, our Bible story takes place right after Jesus had died on the cross and then came back to life. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So when Jesus died on the cross, Peter, James, John, and the rest of Jesus' followers were devastated. They thought it was over, that maybe Jesus wasn't who he said he was. But then Jesus returned to life, and they were overjoyed, and they knew that this meant everything that Jesus had told them was true. Jesus appeared to his friends and followers several times over the next 40 years days. One of those times Jesus told them about the Holy Spirit and he said this in Acts 1, 4, 5, and 8. Wait for the gift my father promised. In a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Now what exactly did that mean? Well we're gonna find out. <laughs> We're going to back up and we're going to look at something Jesus had said earlier when he talked with his followers on a mountainside. And Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he told them this, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, so you must go and make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. 
Jesus had given his disciples a new mission to tell everyone about him. And later, when he told them about the Holy Spirit, he reminded them to share the good news about him with, uh, from one end of the earth to the other. And then he was lifted up into the sky until a cloud hid him from their sight. Two angels appeared, and they told the disciples that Jesus had been taken into heaven, but he would come back again one day. Now, let's just imagine what the disciples might have been thinking at this point. Jesus had given them a mission to tell everyone about him. But how could they do that? I mean, they could probably handle Jerusalem, right? Because they spoke that language. But what about the other countries where people spoke different languages? Well, the men, they gathered at a home in Jerusalem. And they had gathered along with uh, a group of Jesus followers to pray. <laughs> and to wait, just like Jesus had told them to do. And suddenly, a strong sound like wind filled the house. Whoosh. <laughs> and then something that appeared like tongues of fire came to rest over each head of the believers. The believers were filled with the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus had promised. They began to speak in the words from other languages they had never learned before. And it just so happened that the town was filled with visitors from all over who came to celebrate the Feast of Weeks. The visitors were shocked to hear their own languages being spoken by local Jews. Peter, he took charge at this point. Led by the Holy Spirit, he began to share the story of Jesus with the thousands of people gathered in Jerusalem. This is what he said in Acts 2. 22 through 24 and 38. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man with God's approval. He did miracles and signs among you. Long ago, God planned that Jesus would be handed over to you with the help of evil people. You put Jesus to death, but God raised him from the dead. All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. On that day, the Bible tells us 3,000 people believed in the message of Jesus and were baptized. Jesus' followers had officially started their mission as Jesus had commanded them to do. The new believers shared everything and gave to those in need. They ate together, laughed together, cried together, prayed together, and praised God together. And as others saw the joy and love in the new church, they became followers of Jesus too. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus' followers could keep going to fulfill their huge mission of sharing Jesus with the entire world. And here's what's really cool. God didn't just send the Holy Spirit to those early followers of Jesus. He promised the same gift of the Holy Spirit for anyone who puts their trust in Jesus. And that's true today too. The Holy Spirit can give you the power you need to do what God has asked you to do. When you're up against something tough, we want you to remember this. Keep going because God is with you. So let us thank God for always being there for us. Dear God, thank you for this great reminder that no matter what we face, you are with us. Help us to continue the work that you gave Jesus, all the followers of Jesus. We want to share his story with everyone so they too can experience his love and forgiveness. Thank you for sending your spirit to help us. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When Jesus told the disciples to tell people about him from one end of the earth to the other, it must have seemed like an impossible task. But remember the words that Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20. Uh, you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. Jesus promised he'd be with the disciples and he's with us too. He is with you through any fear or problem you might be having. He can help you keep going and keep going because God is with you. Yes. I love how um, the prophet Isaiah described it. This is our memory verse for the month. Isaiah 40, 31, it says this, but those who trust in the Lord will receive new strength. They will fly as high as eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not grow weak. When you feel like you can't keep going one more minute, one more step, one more mile, remember God is with you. He will never leave you and you can trust him no matter what. And when I think about that, I know I can keep going through anything, maybe another marathon. <laughs> well, everyone, that's our first lesson of the year. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you right back here next week. Bye.